grief can forever change us. Grief is what brought me from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere. If it hadn't been for grief, I wouldn't be here. And the more I know about them, the more I can ask for support if I can, or bring my grief out. Not ready for winter. Not ready for everything to be wetter and harder and colder. I know I could turn on lights. I just don't want to. It feels like the perfect way to celebrate the start of fall, uh, the, the solstice, to spend a week by a lake in the rain. <laughs> In 500 meters, turn left onto West Shawnigan Road, weekend, West Shawnigan so Lake Road. Storm, and there was a storm last night, um, and the waves were up. It was 70 knot winds. So, you know, your plans change. But I'm pretty stoked to be out here, as you can see by this beautiful forest. Um, we'll see what happens. This is my shiny new windscreen. Uh, except they installed the wrong one. So next week I go back to get the real glass installed. Look at those pretty beasties. Yay. Jeez. All I can hear is my footsteps and the raindrops as they fall in the trees. <sighs> Magical. I wanted to talk about relationship. Building relationship, nurturing relationship. I am constantly trying to nurture and build relationship with the forest, learning the trees, learning the plants, learning the mushrooms. At the same time, when I tend land of my own, I won't be sad if I have to cut down a tree for the betterment and enrichment of a whole forest. Forest management is just as important as loving all of the trees, helping all of them to survive and thrive better. Oh, I'm puffing because I'm going uphill. Relationship in my life also shows up in the marine world when I go diving. I care deeply about all the species that I am learning about, seeing regularly. I visit the same spots over and over, seeing how many of each species or kind are there. Slightly worried uh, outlook on what might happen for the future of our planet and our own individual survival. The reason I am focusing on relationship building in my life, to build up knowledge and skills that are transferable to others. Ooh, portal. But also so that should anything happen to this planet, as far as downfall of our societal structure, then I am equipped to know what to eat, how to survive, what plants will cure my ailments, which plants will nurture, which plants will poison, so that I can be safe, so that the people I care around me can be safe. I think that's really important. If I eat a sea urchin and take its life, I do so knowing that I'm also supporting the bull kelp forests. Regenerate. I'm doing so kindly, intentionally, 
and with greater respect to the big picture of the ecosystem in mind. I hope you hear this heartfelt respect that I work on sharing and building with nature in my life and understand why occasionally that might mean learning how to fish, which will never ever be ever for sport, never. But for future survival, knowing and practicing those skills while protecting the wildlife, the plants, above or below land, above or below water, is super important to me. Each forest is different. Look at these beautiful cones. Big globules of sap stuck to each scale. They look like a scale of a dragon. It really hit me in the last day or so that it's fall. The season have changed. I have been a little under the weather little burnt out and <clears throat> my body is telling me to slow down as one should do in fall and I'm struggling with that. <sighs> it's so hard because like I'm looking at these beautiful sunflowers and beautiful flower vials I have in the van and I feel sad to say goodbye to summer not ready for winter not ready for everything to be wetter and harder and colder but also excited for the things that i can't do in summer that i can do in this season which is cooking outside over fires and being in places without thousands of other tourists let me show you my flowers Been parked here in the forest. Can you hear the rain on the roof? I think it stopped raining but the trees are still dripping. Very soon, I will process these. They are beautiful calendula flowers that have been seeping in olive oil. I also, I also have my St. John's wort. So I'm gonna mix St. John's wort and calendula and make a beautiful anti-depression sunshine bomb I know I could turn on lights I just don't want to I want to invite you to come on a journey with me. 
I want you to tune in and listen to the sound of the rain on the maple leaves in the trees above us. I want you to smell the smell of the damp earth and imagine yourself also here, surrounded by the forest with your feet on the ferns, the moss, the bracken and the dead leaves on the ground. Imagine yourself your favorite plant. Is it a flower, a fern, a tree, a mushroom? Are you the mycelium? Are you a bulb? Are you a seed or are you a potato? Are you tucked warmly into the earth or buried deep in the soil? Imagine yourself sinking deep, closing your eyes, feeling your feet on your floor, your bum on whatever it is touching, rooting deep into the earth as you touch and draw up the nutrients, moisture and liquid from the earth, connecting up through the top of the soil to the sunlight, to the nourishing air and light above you, feeling the wind breeze through your leaves. Do you pop out a new shoot? It is a big leaf. Is it a small leaf? Does it have spines, spikes? Or are you a flower? Do you have many tiny flowers? Or are you a stinky one? Maybe you don't have a flower at all. Maybe you have spores and you poof, sneeze them everywhere. Imagine yourself coming together with the sunlight, the moonlight, the moisture from the roots below, in your body, in the center of you, finding that place where all those energies come together and come with me on this adventure. I wanted to talk about grief. We can't talk about relationship as I did without talking about grief. I feel like it's really important to acknowledge that we are all holding our own personal grief for whatever it is that we have experienced. Maybe it is old childhood grief. Oh, I have a fork in my pathway. Go that way, or that way. Mm, let's go this way. We can choose different pathways. <laughs> ways of dealing with our grief, ways of holding it. We can internalize it. Or we can share it, turn it into creativity, turn it into art and magic. 
But I want to acknowledge that we all hold it. Maybe it's climate grief. Maybe you deeply care for animals. Maybe you have a rift in your family. Maybe you have a rift in your heart. Maybe something has deeply wounded your heart, your precious, tender, beautiful, magical heart. <sighs> Grief can forever change us. Grief is what brought me from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere. If it hadn't been for grief, I wouldn't be here. Heartbreak. <sighs> now I need to put you down to climb these logs. So far, so good. I'm standing at the crossroads to another path. One comes down here and continues down the hill. And one continues on behind me. It looks like a magical fairy trail. But I wanted to remind you that resourcing and community and support does not always have to be human. Too often we forget about the resourcing that we have around us in nature. Maybe it is your familiar. Maybe it is the tree. For me, I remember fondly the tree that I grew up with climbing in as a kid. The land itself, even though I was not born on these lands and my cultural heritage isn't connected with these lands, they are such an important resource for me to build relationship with and commune with and talk to and be in support and in support of me with and the more I know about them, the more I can ask for support if I can or bring my grief out and speak to this tree that I have been hugging and coming to talk to for ages or come into a new forest like I am today and explore trails and ask the magical beings of this forest to take care of me and it will work. To me, it's forests like these that hold my hurt, that hold me when I am afraid, scared. They hold my grief and my joy. I can come out here and sing and dance and be full of mirth. I come out and I also have so recently brought my tears into these forests too. There are salamanders and banana slugs. Biggest, blackest slugs I've ever seen in my life out here. I will be okay. I'll be installing my diesel heater in the van very soon, let me tell you. They clear the way to 